Hello and welcome to Read Becca. So apparently being able to go back to the library has been very good for me because I have just read a ton. Uh, I kind of can't believe the pile I have next to me and I have been back to the library for more stuff already. So uh, let's get into it because this is going to be quite a lot of stuff. So uh, first off, uh, I finished Lyria last weekend. Um, I did most of this on audio. It's narrated by Tim Curry. Uh, really, really enjoyed the audio. So what I had not known going into this is uh, that I had really read and enjoyed Sabriel, which is the previous book in the series, and had heard that this kind of stands on its own. But really, Sabriel is kind of a prequel, it seems, to this book and the Abhorsen, which are more uh, a duology, I guess. And this one takes place quite a bit later, several years later. Uh, and Sabriel is existing in the world, but she's not a major part of this story. This is really very much Lyriel's story. And then also uh, the second protagonist that we get is Samus, a prince who is a trainee Abhorsen. And the Abhorsens are kind of um, necromancers, but they're not army of the undead <laughs> type of necromancers. They're kind of the opposite of that. So they, they fight the evil necromancers. Um, so that is going on in this world. There is um, kind of a more industrial side of the world and then a wall and a magical side of the world. And so on the magical side of the world, there is this ever running war to keep the necromancers and their army of undead from um, overrunning the world, basically. And so uh, Samoth is very unenthusiastic about his training as an Abhorsen. <laughs> so he, he doesn't really want to become one. Um, and he has a friend who is a very footloose and fancy free from the other side of the wall, the non-magical side of the wall, um, who is constantly kind of getting into trouble. And so Samoth finds himself on a journey in order to help this, this friend, Nick. Uh, but that kind of starts in the middle of the book. The beginning of the book is all Lyriel, and she is in this kind of magical nunnery where the women learn uh, or gain a magical sight, uh, kind of a clairvoyance. And she is past the age where she should have this clairvoyance and feels very isolated because of it. So uh, she continues not getting it. It's starting out on her birthday and she has not had it. She's years late. Uh, so she decides that she's going to jump off of the glacier where the nunnery is, is situated. And when she's about to do that, she sees some people flying in and overhears a conversation that she shouldn't and then is kind of stopped by two other uh, women who let her know they were late as well uh, and while they were waiting they took up other jobs and she had kind of never thought about that so she takes a job in the magical library so a lot of this is her uncovering uh, secret magic while all of the nuns are off doing their clairvoyant deeds uh, for the war. And uh, she is learning this magic that she probably shouldn't really know. Uh, and eventually she, she creates her sidekick, the disreputable dog, out of magic, uh, who is always the high talking point of this book. So obviously, given the two characters, um, we get Lyriel and Samoth eventually meeting up and kind of going on an adventure together. So that kind of is the final third of the book. Um, so I really enjoyed this. I thought it was fantastic. And uh, the epilogue left it on kind of a major cliffhanger. So I really am wanting to get into the next book pretty quickly. And it's been years since I read Sabriel, so 
Um, I don't want to wait that long for the next one. So that is Lyriel. And then um, I have a whole pile of things that I finished for the Queerlit Readathon. So these I'm going to probably do a dedicated wrap up. So I've got a uh, Hench by Natalie Zena Walshot. I can't believe how quickly I went through this. It's a superhero sci-fi uh, about revenge and data science. I got through a Pet by Equaiti Amezi, and this one is a young adult novel all about uh, Jam here who lives in a world where monsters are gone, um, but her mother is a painter who paints a strange creature and Pet awakens it out of the painting and it turns out to be a monster hunter who is there to hunt monsters, but nobody will believe them that there are monsters back in the world. so. Pet and this, or the pet and jam, pet is the monster hunter, have to uh, hunt down the monster on their own. Uh, then I picked up some new stuff from the library. I got these two uh, children's picture books, and uh, we've got uh, Jacob, Jacob's Room to Choose and Jacob's New Dress, and these are by Sarah and Ian Hoffman and illustrated by Chris Case. Um, and these are both for uh, or about gender non-conforming kids. So I will wrap those all up on their own. Um, I also finished on audio, uh, what did I finish on audio? Across the Green Grass Fields by Shannon McGuire. Uh, loved it. I thought it was really great and it is um, the sixth book in the Wayward Children series. It is all about an intersex a girl who kind of confides in the wrong friend and uh, gets bullied for that and runs away and then uh, finds herself in the hooflands where she lives with centaurs who have herds of unicorns and it follows what is pretty much the closest to a traditional portal fantasy that we've seen in the series so in this one um, the centaurs very much know and the people of the hooflands know that a human shows up and kind of has an adventure and then leaves but um our protagonist really doesn't want to she is making herself at home there so um, I, I really enjoyed it it was not my favorite of the series but i thought it was a really solid entry point and um, probably great for a younger reader to get into the wayward children series uh as far as stuff that i have ongoing um, actually, let's talk about the stuff I picked up, maybe? Yeah, let's talk about the stuff I picked up. So I had The Hold on How to Find a Princess by Alyssa Cole, so I went to pick that up, and this is an FF romance set in, uh, I think, a fictional African nation. And I'm really excited about this one, but I haven't started it yet, so that I definitely want to get to very quickly. Um, so while I was there, I of course browsed around, and like I said, I picked up the two children's books while I was there. Um, I picked up a graphic novel, or not a graphic novel, I think this is just individual comics. Um, Everything is Beautiful and I Am Not Afraid by Yao Zhao. And um, it says Yao Zhao was born in Tianjin, China. She is an illustrator, cartoonist, and writer residing in New York. She writes about the transient experience of being a queer immigrant in a foreign country. So um, I believe this is not quite memoir, but they're individual, like single page and spread comics. Um, so it's not like a graphic memoir altogether, but it is drawn from her experience. Uh, and then while I was wandering, I picked up Pew by Catherine Lacey. And this is more on the literary side, but it seems to um, have a lot to do with gender. Um, as far as I understand, the plot of this one is that an individual is found asleep on a pew on Sunday morning when everyone arrives for church, and they are not distinguishable in terms of gender or nationality or race, and that causes some interesting conversations. Um, I think it's probably going to have an element of uh, these southern religious people 
um, applying their own ideals and biases on those aspects of this individual. Um, and then the, the person is also mute or is not talking to them. So they can't kind of uncover any details about this person. So um, that should be really interesting. I could not believe, uh, very random, but I started flipping through after I picked this up and I had never seen anybody mention this. But um, the quote, I don't know if it's an epigraph when there's just a single quote at the beginning, but the quote is from the ones who walk away from Omelas by Ursula K. Le Guin. So major crazy coincidence that I talk about that constantly and uh, it happens to come up. So um, other stuff, that, that was the stuff I picked up that I want to get to. The stuff I've got on the go, um, we've got dress codes. I'm at about page 175. So dress codes by Richard Thompson Ford. I am really enjoying this. I think um, I, I ran out of time on it. So I am actually going to probably wait and get a physical copy because it has a lot of pictures in it that are referenced and I would love to see those in color. Um, so I'm probably gonna let this one go and get a print copy. We've got Women Talking. I read another about 20 pages, so I've got 30 pages to go. We're getting very close to the end here. And uh, let's see. And then my last two that I've got uh, for my next priorities for this weekend. So I think tonight I'm going to try to make some progress and start catfishing on Catnet because I have chaos on Catnet. Um, my cold came in on ebook. They do not have a print copy, sadly, but I want to reread this before I get into chaos on catnet. And so I'm gonna have to rush through it. It's not very long, so that won't take me too long. And the relentless moon. So I'm halfway through that. I want to make some solid progress on this tomorrow. So that's a lot. <laughs> um, I also on audio am a little over halfway through binge by Tyler Oakley. Uh, random coincidence, I had mentioned Hannah Hart in my, um, in my Pride Recommendations memoir list, and um, he was in kind of that same group of uh, YouTubers, or early famous YouTubers with her, and they were good friends, and he happened to be on a, a new show that I am watching, um, Exposure. It is a reality competition show. Uh, for photography, but it's all done with phones. And he happened to come on as a guest judge. And it was so weird to see him as this like serious adult, <laughs> you know, having watched him, you know, as a, as a, a very young adult on YouTube. And so it just it was random coincidence that he happened to come up this week. And I've had his memoir binge on uh, my list for a while. It is pretty difficult listening. It's very funny and he keeps it light throughout, but I mean, he talks about um, kind of being rejected and estranged from a parent because he's gay. Um, he talks about eating disorder a lot as kind of implied by the title um, and some uh, abuse, abusive relationships that he was in. So uh, definitely trigger warnings for that stuff if you pick it up, but overall I'm really enjoying it. And I am listening to that one on audio, so it's narrated by himself. Um, is great. Uh, and I did actually go a little crazy on top of all of this stuff. <laughs> I also borrowed a ton of stuff on ebook for Translatathon. I remember a boatload of things that um, I had been excited about that were translated works. So um, some things that were up for prizes like Quality Land by Markov Kling. Um, that is, I think, the primary one that I want to get to. Uh, on top of the, the Translate-a-thon TBR that I already did. So I just have a lot of stuff to get to. <laughs> um, I think I will be kept busy by what I have left on here for sure. And as I said, I'm going to definitely do a dedicated wrap up for the things that I just mentioned here um, from the Queer Lit Readathon, which is wrapping up today. So hopefully I will be able to get through a little more of catfishing on Catnet um, that I've got to start and progress on and uh, finish up, I think I will be able to do that, uh, binge. And that should wrap up my Queer Lit SFF 
out in the back for a little bit. Queer Lit Readathon. Um, so that's what has been going on reading wise. Um, I honestly have not been too busy outside of work this week, so that's why I was able to read a ton. Um, so pretty quiet week other than work. Um, I don't think I've done anything new exciting in terms of watching or gaming. I'm still playing Cook, Serve, Delicious a whole bunch. Um, so that's pretty much it for me this week. I really don't have anything to catch you up on. It's ridiculously hot here. Uh, it is, I think today we're in the upper 90s and tomorrow we're supposed to get over 100 and it's quite humid so our, you know, real feel is like 10 degrees higher than the actual temperature pretty commonly so it's, it's really nasty out. Um, I step outside the door and immediately my glasses just fog up <laughs> every time so we're in that miserable summer period and I think it's not going to get very much cooler for the next week or so. So that is it for me today. Um, I hope everyone is having as good of a reading week as I am and had a great readathon if you participated. Um, I'm looking forward to here in I think two days translatathon starts so I want to get through some of this stuff particularly Relentless Moon since that does not fit for anything. Uh, and then get jumping into my translated works this coming week. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe if you want to see more.